Hey everybody, what's happening in the world? It's January 23rd. Welcome back to What's Happening in the World. I've been producing this program for about two years now and your support means a lot. You can use the link below to make a one-time donation or at the very least, click like and subscribe. I'm aware the doomsday clock gets updated in an hour from this recording, so I wanted to run through quickly some tabs that were open on my phone before I get to producing a video on that entirely separate. So without further delay, let's get into it. Many of you may have seen this article already. I should just run through it quickly that the 1.5 degree is deader than a doornail and scientists are divided on it because of paid interests. Every year we are fighting to understand the situation and James Hansen is kind enough to come out and say that it's irresponsible to sugarcoat the truth and for others it's not only wrong but even dangerous. And so he says it's deader than a doornail, again, and to make clear to the political leaders and establishment, the status quo, what the situation is, yet you have other people saying like the physics is wrong and it's too early to tell and it's fueling extreme weather, it's becoming apparently obvious, so on and so forth, and more on that as time progresses. Along the same note, prepare for gray swan climate from the Atlantic, also Accentuating this idea of non-linearity, means of climate acceleration. Okay, not to beat a dead horse, but their article here is saying that, you know, 2024 is beginning in uncharted territory. You can look at the North Atlantic Sea temperature anomalies. And, you know, we ended last year really, really hot. Everybody knows this. You follow all the same content, so they're re-emphasizing that. And then again, from time, also saying you know, putting a, a Green New Deal spin on it with um, making this an opportunity, okay, as if we're still doing this. A professor, a Selecki is a professor of geography at Hunter College, University of New York. He is an author of that paid paper called 1.5 Special Report of, on IPCC released in 2018, which I read. He's saying it's not a problem will go away. New evidence is showing it's heating and changing faster weather-wise than we can expect a few years ago. Many highly vulnerable populations are already facing devastating impacts, so on and so forth. While the COP28 meeting late last year provided some glimmers of hope. Okay, this is where I, I want to start stop reading this article. But again, he's saying, you know, get ready for two degrees. Meanwhile, in the grand old party primary bubble, nobody gives a damn about climate change. Drill, baby, drill, sauce. proclaims the Republican front runner from Mother Jones. You know, the Iowa caucus wrapped up with Trump, New Hampshire's running today, that uh, we have all this oil under our liquid gold under our feet. We have a lot of potential income, says the guy who can't even remember what forts there are. Fort this, fort that. These are our options. Maybe we should just leave the country. Also, Chinese stock market just tumbled, but let's move on. ExxonMobil sues investors to block climate petition. Published yesterday. Very strange, but not surprising. Uh, ExxonMobil, who my father worked for, has sued climate activists, investors, in a bid to prevent their climate proposal from going to a vote at its annual investor meeting. So the complaint follows up against Follow This and Arjuna Capital, which have called Exxon to step up the pace and reduction of, you know, get on it, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. But Exxon, you know, a company, not a person, we treat them as such, says U.S. and Dutch investors are trying to, but driven by an extreme agenda, hmm, maybe to save all of the planet and the human race, it is rare for companies to go to court to block shareholders' motions, and this is the first time Exxon has done so. If the Texas, Texas-based firm wins the case, it would have 
significant impact on future shareholder petitions. Listed firms usually debate the merits of individual proposals with Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC, but critics say that the U.S. financial regulator varies its advice depending on which administration is in office. It's so it's all the dude who says so. They want to set so-called scope three targets. Exxon is currently, you know, want to reach net zero by 2050 for scope one and scope two, scope two, but which is this pollution from its production processes and energy it consumes. However, it is only one of five major oil companies which does not have scope three targets. They want to keep pumping it and raking it in. Surprise! Oceans are quickly losing their ability to support fish populations. Exxon Mobil? Yes. Research has unveiled a concerning trend. CC is stealthily undermining the ocean's capacity to sustain plankton, resulting in the rapid decline of fish populations. Oh, gee. Boy, that's going to be fun without food. So I don't need to be a rock, you know, brain surgeon to tell you. A rocket brain surgeon to tell you that you know fish rely on phytoplankton, and they found that a 16 to 26 percent decrease in plankton in the North Atlantic could result in a staggering 38 to 55 percent drop in the oceans of capacity to support fish. Yeah, sue those scope three targets, okay? While our energy imbalance shoots through the roof, from Dr. Leon Simmons again illustrating here how radically out of control the situation is it is completely unprecedented and out of our hands at this point as more things unfold much more things a new marine source of carbon emissions into the atmosphere bottom trolling is previously an unaccounted for source of carbon emissions this is really scary but uh science reveal in a study published today as the world scrambles to slash emissions and fight petitions in courts and drill baby drill uh deforestation and other sources finds bottom trawling the act of dragging a heavy fishing net across the ocean floor and resuspending some of the carbon in the seafloor sediment it to be a significant source so Today finds that 50 to 60% of CO2 produced by underwater bottom trawling will make it into the atmosphere within nine years. Talk about a don't look up moment. <laughs> Countdown, okay? So bottom trawling into the atmosphere Atmosphere each year is estimated to double the annual emissions from fuel combustion of the entire global fishing fleet, about 4 million vessels. So that we've known that these heavy fishing nets, some as large as 747 jets, destroy sea life and habitats, but we recently discovered that bottom trawling also unleashes plumes of carbon which could otherwise be safely stored for millennia in the ocean floor. Our study is the very first to show that over half the carbon released by bottom trawling eventually escapes in the atmosphere in about 10 years. So we have bottom trawling, deforestation, forest burning up, more pipelines. We are nuking ourselves into oblivion, okay? Obviously, because Greenland lost more ice than previously estimated published in NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory on the 17th. Few days ago and this short is a new comprehensive analysis of satellite finds that majority of glaciers on the landmass have retreated significantly the greenland ice sheet has lost one-fifth more ice in the past four decades than previously estimated this additional ice loss has had only an indirect impact on sea levels but could hold implications for ocean circulation in the future we are completely reorganizing the everything on the planet okay we are geoengineering the planet ourselves of the 207 glaciers studied 179 retreated significantly 27 hold steady and one advanced slightly okay but that one advanced slightly is going to fuel all sorts of climate denial on the internet okay because we cannot be scared we have to hold on to hope that it's going to be okay a false belief in the future also reinstated here on Nature published, I guess it's the same report, and it looks like I can't access it, but it's the same information. And meanwhile, people are woke, okay? Activists in Norway just 
a disrupt gather of oil chiefs, you know, Extinction Rebellion, as if they have a plan to re reorganize all of this. We don't. Um, more ecology news. More than 80% of tree species endemic to the Atlantic rainforest are threatened with extinction, study finds. Brazilian researchers reported on the 11th this month that 82% of more than 2,000 species found in the Atlantic rainforest biome are threatened with extinction to some degree, while 65% of 4950 tree species present in the biome are, including non-endemics, are endangered. So I think Beckwith did a video on this on how we're mutilating the tree of life, and that just accentuates that um, that the population was in decline the last three generations was less than 30% for only 7% of the endemics. Um, species with a decline of 30 to 50% in 10 years or three generations are, are classified as vulnerable, the lowest level of threat. It was the first such assessment ever. You can read this in its entirety. That deserves a whole video in itself. I'm not going to do that. But a little surprise. Yesterday, food from urban alcohol agriculture has carbon footprint six times larger than conventional produce. You know, I have this sort of fantasy of everyone turning to each other and saying, oh, well, we should grow our own food in the cities. And, you know, you guys know all that. It's a load of crap. Well, University of Michigan-led international study finds that fruits and vegetables grown in urban farms and gardens have a carbon footprint that is on average six times greater than conventionally grown produce. However, a few city-grown crops equal or outperformed conventional agriculture under certain conditions. For instance, tomatoes grown in soil of open-air urban plots had a lower carbon intensity than tomatoes grown in conventional greenhouses, while the emissions difference between conventional urban agriculture vanished for air-freighted crops like asparagus. But urban practitioners, you know, can reduce their impacts by cultivating crops that are typically greenhouse-grown or air-freighted. It offers a variety of social, nutritional, plant, place-based environmental benefits. It makes it appealing. Basically, you're saying people like to get together, hang out, enjoy the sunshine, and act like they're doing some good. But really, urban food produced through urban agriculture emitted 0.42 grams per of carbon per serving, six times higher than the 0 0.07 of conventionally grown produce on large swaths of land, which are being affected by massive heat waves and people being unable to work outside. You get that? More research can be conducted there. However, air conditioning systems trap harmful particles from wildfire smoke. Smoke, you probably already knew this. Led by University of Technology in Sydney, found that air conditioner units trap particles from wildfire smoke reduce our exposure to potentially harmful elements like soluble mercury, sulfate, and nitrate. This revelation adds to a new dimension of the understanding of air conditioning beyond its primary functions. Uh, it's a significant health ca consider. Okay, they trap wildfire smoke and reduce our harmful, but there are more wildfire smokes and, I mean, wildfires and um, much smaller, rounder particles than urban aerosols, making them more likely to be inhaled into our lungs and transfer toxic elements into our bloodstream. Nowhere is safe. Yes, our priorities are doubling down on naval carrier capacity, capability. Na U.S. Navy is ramping up delivery of its new Ford-class nuclear-powered submarine aircraft carriers, just as there is demonstrated, demonstrable increased strategic and op operational need uh, you know, for this, you know, we're going to build more of that and build ties, you know, North Korea with Russia. Katie doesn't care about any of this. She doesn't know about collapse or the world ending. Nothing, nothing about that. But the world looks like 19th century Europe. The World Economic Forum president worries the world is looking too much like that. Multipolarity, not a lot of peace. Yeah, this guy says, uh... There's problems, and I just looked over the report, the global assessment of risks that WF put out, and for <clears throat> the near-term two-year outlook, it's pretty much AI and weather disasters, polarity, division, financial crisis, and kind of all the usual things, you know, of the 2020s, but the 10-year risk, if you scroll ahead on that report, is the really not surprising and scary stuff with uh, extreme weather, um, 
climate disruptions, food disruptions, like world changing, fish populations declining, so on and so forth. So this is what's happening in the world. Looks bleak. My name is Reagan. It's been a pleasure. And please like and subscribe and make a small donation. I appreciate you guys. 2024 is going to be a thrill. Either one who wins, probably a good idea to leave the country. If you can, get your passport updated. I'll talk to you again soon, folks. See ya.